Yeah, you're gonna have to turn them in. Okay, girl, how was lunch? Ow. Ow? It was that. It was Al. No, I was outside with my friends and I was running and my side started to hurt. Oh man. I, I had four cheese sticks. You had four cheese sticks? Yeah. Oh. All right, guys. Hello, hello. Happy Friday. Welcome to this nice day. Awesome that you are here. Okay. On your desk, guys, is every review that you have turned in to us. Okay. That is the reviews that your name is not on the board. You do have a grade now in Power School for those reviews. We are giving them back to you for you to keep. They've already been graded. One of the best ways to study for a final is to redo your reviews. You take these home and let's say Sunday night, you look at part one and two again, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about that strategy next week, but these are now for you to help you study. If you don't have parts one and two, three and four and five, okay? And six on your desk, that means you still got to turn some things in. So that's everything that we have. All right. Okay. We are going to do one last part today, guys. And that is part seven. Well, part seven is nice because you guys just finished that. Job. Okay, here, just keep them right here so I can get to them. All right, so you yeah, have a blank piece right. of paper on your desk, and you're going to be taking some notes on that blank piece of paper. We're going to ask you to factor. Now, these directions are a little bit more than factoring, but what we want you to focus on is can you factor this quadratic? Okay, that's what we want you to think about. So, how are you going to factor that quadratic? What are your strategies? Okay, I'm trying to turn my area instead of an area from a sum to an area into a product. So don't forget, move your box and diamond and go from there. Okay, we're looking for the base and the height of that guy. If you need a factor sheet, let us know. You are more than welcome to use factor sheet. What multiplies 42 add to 13? Let us know. Share. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. 
<laughs> you might not be able to trust it. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Well, you did take it home. Mm -hmm. okay. Took the factor sheet home. <laughs> he did. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah. 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 Do we need to do the coordinate points? Nope. Okay. Just the factors. Okay, guys. Let's talk about what multiplies 42 and adds 213. What is that, guys? Six and seven. So we're going to have 42p squared, 13p. We know we have six and seven. So we'll take our six here. It doesn't matter where your six and seven go as long as you go to those squares. And we'll have a six and then we'll have a seven. Okay. So remember the whole point of finding the factors is you are rewriting the area of that rectangle in a different way. We used to have that as a sum. But we want you to be able to write it this way. Those two things mean the exact same thing. They're just written differently. So why? Why would we want to rewrite it? Well, we spent three weeks for you guys to be able to do this. Now, the very first page of part seven final and part seven review is just this. Can you find the factors? That's it. But the last page of the final and the last page of your review today is going to ask you to go one step further. Can you graph this? And in order to graph it, you have to be able to find your x intercepts. Now, your x intercepts are the tricky ones. It's really difficult to see your x intercept when it's written as a sum, but it's nice when you know you're looking for what value of x, or in this case, what value of p do you plug in to get zero. So what would you plug in right there to make that part zero? Um, for that one, it'd be negative six and the other one negative seven. So exactly. So what you're going to have to do on the back page is take it this one step further. You're going to have to find your x intercepts. And the best way, the most efficient way to find your x intercepts, you have to put this in factored form and ask yourself, what do I plug in to make it zero? I want y to be zero. Okay. And so that's where we're headed. And that's why you guys spent three and a half weeks learning how to do just this part. Okay. Um, I, I should show them what my algebra three kids were factoring today. They were mad. I made them factor again today, okay? It doesn't go away. Knowing how to factor will keep coming back, okay? All right, that is, this one is nice. And the reason this one is nice is right here is because you only have one purple tile. You only have one X squared term, and that makes the factoring kind of easy. So let's try one more. Let's try that guy. I want you to think about what this one would look like. Set up your box in mind and see what happens. I don't know if this is the takeaway one or not. I should be new one. Huh? Yep. All right. Yeah. All right, guys, my question to you is when you do your box and diamond on this one, what do you get for the top of your diamond? 130, negative 135. Negative 135p squared. Now, all of you that have your factor sheets, is negative or is 135 even on your factor sheet? No. Ooh, okay. So that means you're going to have to spend some time thinking about 135 
times what is going to give me something that adds to six. So here's the question. When you get something really large here, you need to ask yourself this. Stop and ask yourself, can you make this problem easier? Because in the directions for the final in your review, it'll ask, factor this completely, okay? So I want you to take a look and see about the nine, the six, and the negative 15. How can we make this problem easier for us? Let's remove a three. Look at nine, six, and negative 15. Let's remove a three, meaning I'm gonna divide out a three. So nine divided by three is three. So that means I'm gonna end up with three purple tiles, okay? Six divided by three, means I have two orange tiles and negative 15 divided by three is negative five, okay? Now notice, all I've done is I've taken out what's known as a common factor and then I'm gonna try this. So on your notes here, I want you to make your box and diamond for this guy. And I want you to think about, oh yeah, that is a lot easier to figure out what multiplies to negative 15 and adds to two than what multiplies negative 135. Make it easy on yourself, okay? I'm still looking for the base and the height, okay? I just took a three out first. So how do I make it easy? This is a classic ACT move. They'll give you something like this and you're gonna spend a lot of time trying to figure out factors of 135 that add to six when you could just do this. It's about time, it's about efficiency, okay? So that'll be the plot. So what multiplies? Yeah, it's negative 15. So now let's talk about what multiplies to negative 15 but adds to two. It would be yeah, negative three and five. That'll give me negative 15 and five plus negative three gives me two. So it'll look like this. I plug in my points there. Okay, and I come down here. I'm going to take the three out here. I'm going to take the P out there. So then I have three P and P. Okay. Um, here. Oh, why did you do that? I know I'm going to be taking out what? A five? Yeah. And a negative one there. Does that make it work? Yes. So that means my factors, my base is 3p plus 5. My height is p minus 1. That gets factored completely, okay? When you look on your final, you're going to see an answer like that. Now, if you had done this, there's nothing wrong with this. If you continued on this side, fantastic. That just means you are willing to figure out those factors of 135. Just be careful. What would have happened if you would have kept down this road is you would have gotten an answer that looks like this. 9P plus 15 times P minus one, or you would have gotten an answer that looks like this. 3P plus five, oops, 3P plus five times 3P minus three. You would have gotten one of those two answers which isn't 100% wrong, it's just not factored completely. Guaranteed, both of these will probably be a choice on the multiple check test. So when you're taking it, you're like, oh yeah, I got 9p plus 15, got it, I'm right. Be careful, neither one of these are factored completely. It has to look like that. So just watch, you're gonna have one of these on the review and one of them on the final, okay? Let's say you came down to here, you've got it. 
All you have to see is that 9 and 15 have a common factor of 3. You can remove the 3 here, or right there, 3 and negative 3, you can take the 3 out there. It doesn't matter if you take it out at the end or the beginning. It just makes your life easier when you take it out at the beginning, okay? Just be aware of that. All right. What you guys are going to do, you have, when does this class feel? 50, 20 minutes, 20 minutes to work on these four problems, okay? When you're done, let us know. I'm going to check it over, okay? Okay, is it for this? <laughs> turn those in. So I, thank you very much. Is it just turn them in? Yep, I will get them. Is it just turn them in? I'm going to yeah, use the No. I know. You're going to use your nose? No. You get to use what's in your. Yes. What's in your brain. I know. This is the, this is we're preparing you. Now remember, one of these on the front. Make it easy on yourself. Do what we just did. Remove a number first and solve it. It is festival. Oh, yes, it is. Just because it's not a faster pair on the key doesn't mean that something can something can happen. 
And then I think you have turned in everything else. So if you have something else, please click on that. And you have huh? you have to do like a quick okay. Thank you. So what we know about the two I can So what do you get? Negative four. And that's how you know. Okay. And you're good. Awesome. Bring that in. Okay. How are you? Oh, you are good. Eleven fifty. Oh, you have ten minutes. Hang out. Love it. One positive. Very good. Okay. 
I also had to take this out. <laughs> okay, that's okay. You can bring that in, don't worry about it. All right. If your name is on the board, that means that we are missing parts of your review. If they are not done. Affairs. It has been graded in power school, so I would work on the other things. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Those two people. You, yeah, the ones that we have on your desk, if you think we got them graded, those are for you to help you study. So they were graded today and yeah. Monday. So. Karaoke. There you go. June 4th, it'll be mass karaoke. Oh, no! <laughs> 
Hey, hey, I want to do that song too. So <laughs> that's the only math song I know. You think? All right, CBVI students, if you do not have any questions, um, 
we are hopeful that you are able to get all of the study guides done and turn them in so you can get credit for that, but also be prepared for the final next week. We are hosting a study session um, today. If you guys feel comfortable to come to the building from 1.15 to three o'clock during our INE time, we're hosting a study session. So if you guys had any questions or anything, um, our emails will be available. So you could email either Ms. Taffa or I, if you had any questions regarding something and you wanted to have it, um, something come up, I'm gonna put my email in the chat. And I'm gonna put Ms. Taffa's email in the chat. Very nice to come today. Remember, we are here from one until three today. If you're feeling nervous at all about the final, come in and study with us. We're gonna have a little study session. So come on in, we'll help you out, okay? So again, if you feel comfortable coming to the building, if not, um, and you wanna reach out, go ahead and email us. I put the emails in the chat. Um, and that way you can reach out to us. We will answer any questions that you have. Um, and. If need be, we can set up a Zoom to have a conversation with you. So we are available to you um, from 1.15 to three o'clock. So I hope you guys have a great weekend if we do not see you at the study session. And please make sure that you're getting that stuff done. Have a great day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.